with an estimated net worth of over $340 billion in today's money, John D. Rockefeller is one of the wealthiest men of all time and among the richest people in modern history. And in this video, we will get to know a part of his story and some of the best lessons that we can learn from that. It is important for us to understand that one usually cannot achieve such financial success like what John D. Rockefeller did with just mainly pure luck and also without certain characteristics and work ethic that made him reach that level. And in this video, we will dive deeper into that and try to discover some of the main factors to his success because as always, success usually leaves clues. It is also important to note that his oil conglomerate, which mainly started with Standard Oil, has been out there for more than 152 years. As a matter of fact, not so many companies survive for such a long period of time. Actually, only about 21% of the companies make it to 20 years of age, and only about 0.5% of all companies make it to 100 years. So obviously, the Standard Oil conglomerate and its founder have done something that 99.5% of other companies and founders don't, which is extremely, extremely rare. And in this video, we'll try to figure that out. So without further ado, let's get started. John D. Rockefeller was born in 1839, about two decades before the Civil War in America, which happened back in 1861. According to his biography, John D. Rockefeller was not born into riches or any type of wealth. In fact, he did not have an easy childhood. He had to move a lot from one place to another with his family when he was a child, due to his father being away from his family most of the time. John D. Rockefeller was actually desperate to make his own money and to stop being dependent on his father for that and for other reasons as well. So when he reached high school at the age of 16, he decided to drop out and to look for a job instead. And yes, he was only 16 years old. He wanted to become a bookkeeper and that's what he understood the most. So the young Rockefeller used to make a list of the biggest and the most well-known companies in Cleveland where he lived at the time and he used to go out every morning and ask them if they wanted a bookkeeper. But of course, being at such a young age, nobody wanted to hire him. However, that did not stop him from getting what he wanted. So when his list would run out of companies to visit and ask them for a job, he would start over again and visit the same companies on his list which he had visited before and ask them for the same job again. Which actually eventually did work out and a company called Huet Antuttle ended up hiring him to serve an unpaid apprenticeship for three months in which after that, John received his first humble and retroactive pay for his work there. The day when he got the job was remembered and celebrated by him years and years after he got the job, and he would call that day the job day. Because obviously, it was a very important day for him, and because of the fact that his entire life trajectory has changed because of it. Singleness of purpose is one of the chief essentials for success in life, no matter what may be one's aim, said John D. Rockefeller. Which brings us to lesson number one. Focus, consistency, and persistence are key factors for success in any endeavor. Lesson number two, start small but think big. After working as a bookkeeper for a couple of years and when Rockefeller turned 20 years old, he decided to start a business together with a friend called Maurice Clark. In 1858, each of them put $2,000 down, which is roughly about $72,000 in today's money. And they both formed Clark and Rockefeller Commission Merchants, where they sold meat, grain, and other miscellaneous goods. In their first and second year of business, they were profitable. And then, within a short period of time, the Civil War started in America. John D. Rockefeller, being a shrewd businessman, saw an opportunity in that, and he started selling to the Union Army who was involved in the war. And because of the war and all of what was happening, the grain prices went up, and so did Rockefeller and Clark commissions, since they were mainly profiting off of the commissions that they were paid. And therefore, their business prospered even more due to that, which eventually made Rockefeller a rich man already in his 20s. I have always tried to turn every disaster into an opportunity, said Rockefeller. In 1863, Rockefeller saw that the future of the commission merchant business in Cleveland was going to be limited and he saw a bigger opportunity laying in the black gold industry, which was the oil industry. So because of that, he decided to go in in another partnership and start a new business in this new booming industry, which was marked as the first step for him towards building his very well-known oil conglomerate, which became Standard Oil. Lesson number three, keeping a ledger. John D. Rockefeller learned early on in his life to keep a close eye on everything he spent and everything he earned by writing all of it down since he was young. This particular habit of paying close attention to the numbers and knowing exactly where the money is flowing in and out has helped him out very well in business. According to his biography, since he was young in school, he showed a great ability to solve arithmetic problems and he was very precise and calculated. 
he actually used this ability to his advantage by cutting down on expenses as much as possible and by increasing his profit margins more than any of his competitors. He said that many of the brightest competitors kept their books in such a way that they did not actually know when they were making money on a certain operation and when they were losing. John D. Rockefeller used his accounting and business acumen to convince his competitors to sell their businesses to him. He used to do that by inviting them over and showing them that he could sell at a loss more than they could afford staying in business. And in that way, he would convince them and offer them to buy their businesses, which actually has worked out. During that time, there were no anti-monopoly laws or legislations in the US, but there were still a lot of people who criticized and condemned his business actions. Nonetheless, within a short period of time, John D. Rockefeller gained control over 90% of the oil refining industry in America all while in his 30s. Lesson number four, don't forget to rest. As the author Ron Cherno writes in his book Titan describing how John D. Rockefeller would go about his work during the day, he said that he worked at a more leisurely pace than many other executives, napping daily after lunch and often dozing in a lounge chair after dinner. John D. Rockefeller has actually several famous quotes about this topic and some of them are, he who works all day has no time to make money, I know of nothing more despicable and pathetic than a man who devotes all the waking hours of the day to making money for money's sake. It is remarkable how much we all could do if we avoid hustling and go along at an even pace and keep from attempting too much. So this is obviously how Rockefeller saw the best way to become productive and find the right balance in his own life, all while amassing his wealth. Lesson number five using the leverage of other people and being open-minded. I would rather earn 1% of 100 people's efforts than 100% of my own efforts, said Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller understood early on that one cannot achieve greatness in business on his own, since it's usually a team sport. One could see that from the fact that the businesses he started were initially in the form of a partnership with someone else during the beginning. According to his biography, he always had a strong attention to details and he valued his workers' perspectives. He would always listen to their opinions regardless of what positions they held. He used to walk around the premises of his refineries asking questions to the employees and writing down their answers on a notepad. He was always looking for ways to improve the business. It's been said that despite his wealth, he was open-minded and he wasn't ego-driven. And because of that, his influence among his executives increased and they respected him even more. Lesson number six, give back intelligently. Charity is injurious unless it helps the recipient to become independent of it. It is a mistake for a man who wishes for happiness and to help others to think that he will wait until he has made a fortune before giving away money to deserving objects, said John D. Rockefeller. A lot of people know the famous saying that goes by, give a man a fish and he will eat for a day, teach a man how to fish and he will never be hungry again. Obviously, John D. Rockefeller believed in that concept and he accounted for that in his philanthropic actions and donations. Now, generally speaking, the topic of philanthropy and giving back is probably going to become more and more important in the coming years due to the growing wealth gap and the fact that we are at the end of a long-term debt cycle, which usually results in big conflicts if the problems were not addressed and were left ignored. And giving back is probably going to be an integral part of the solution because at the end of the day, the secret of living is giving. And that should never be forgotten by someone who has already made it, as well as by someone who is still trying to make it, since this usually pays back in ways one could not really even think of. So these were the top sex lessons from one of the wealthiest men who ever lived. If you enjoyed this video, you can click here to watch this one. Other than that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a thumbs up on this video. And with that being said, see you in the next video.